What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? You doing good? Hey, yeah, uh, clap your hands and be glad to be at church today. Good to see you. Also, welcome to all of our online viewers. Let's give it up for them. Thanks for watching. You know, they're just watching from like cruise ships and uh, Cancun while you have convinced your kids that a staycation is going to be way better. Going to the SA Zoo for the 20th time. Come on, it's going to be awesome. Hey, my name is Brad and I'm so glad to be with you guys. And, and speaking of staycations, how many of you at home, you have a spot that is your big comfy spot? Maybe it's a couch, maybe it's a chair, but you just have a spot when you get home. Raise your hand. Come on, let me see you. Let me see you. All right. I don't know what's wrong with the rest of you. Man, you need one of these. Get you a comfy spot, man, where you go home and, and you just kind of cuddle up. You know, like today, a chilly day. It's, it's cold. Like, it's cold out there. I walked out there a while ago. Uh, how many of you would confess that you would love on a cold day to get in your comfy spot with, with a Snuggie? How many of you would confess you have a Snuggie? All right, men that raised your hand, ushers are going to escort you out <laughs> right now. I saw that hand over there. Got a Snuggie. I don't know if you know it, um, but our very own worship pastor, Ryan and Casey, they are the face of the double Snuggie. And here's a little advertisement I found the other day. <laughs> you know, Ryan's kind of got a big head. Um, literally and figuratively, but uh, yeah, so that's the double Snuggie, man. That's, that's awful. All right, get that off there. We don't want to see that. Um, man, when I get home, I like to be comfortable. I like to get home. I've got a big couch that, that's really not, you can like lay like this, and the TV's like right perfect in my direction, man. I can turn on some HGTV, some, some Fixer Upper, you know what I'm saying, watching. Uh, all right, yeah, let's clap for Fixer Upper. I guess we do. That's what you want to do. Um, some of you are going to spend your whole vacation week watching Fixer Upper, apparently. But uh, yeah, some bubble guppies, if Slade's in the rooms. Anybody like bubble guppies? You're like, what is that? Well, get a, get a one-year-old and you'll find out. Uh, if Jess is in the room, of course, it's Kardashians. Yeah, people are booing you, babe. Sorry. <laughs> I, I just like to get comfortable. I like to chill. Uh, I like to get in the floor and get comfortable, man. I'll get down with Slade in the floor and I posted, this is my favorite video of Slade. I, I make this noise that he hates. Like, he hates this noise. Check this video out. I'm in the floor making this weird bird noise. Oh, he hates it, but he loves me. <laughs> See how comfortable I am? My son's hugging me. One more time. Some of you want to take me outside and beat me right now. <laughs> what are you doing to that kid? What's crazy is Jess reacts the same way when I do it, my wife. It's, it's so bizarre. But I'll get comfortable, and I'll spend hours just chilling. And time flies by, and next thing I know, it's the end of the day. It's time to go to bed, and the next day it can start all over. Well, listen, there's nothing wrong with going home and spending time with your family. But today, we want to use the couch as an illustration of how in life, we can get extremely comfortable. And we can get into routine, routines, and life can just kind of exist. And, and I'm going to use the ladder as an illustration here in a mo moment as well. But for the couch, we can go home and, like I said, spend time there. But in life, we can get in these moments like, have you ever met someone and, and don't, don't say their name because they may be sitting beside you, but when you ask them, How, how's it going, how's your day, whatever, they always give you a response like, um, you know, I'm just making it, I'm just making it through another day, and you're just like, I don't even want to ask you anymore because you know what the answer is going to be, and, and my thought is this, man, God only gave us so many days, why would I just be making it, why would I just be getting through, but sometimes in life, we just kind of can get in these ruts where we exist, you get up, Maybe you go to, go to uh, uh, your job where you don't really like what you do. It wasn't what you were planning to do, but you found yourself years later still doing it. And then you go home, you have your meal, you go to bed, you get up, you repeat it week after week after week. And we are creatures of habit, so we can get in ruts where we become just comfortable. And a rut is just a routine we get in that lacks power or purpose. Power or purpose. Just existing just living, just going through the motions. Here's what I want to help you with. God wants you to do something. Pastor Jonathan didn't know what I was speaking about. He got up and he is 
completely set me up for this message talking about our dreams that maybe were once dead. Maybe for you, your life is represented right here. You're just comfortable. You're just paying the bills. You're just existing. You're just going through the motions. Whereas over here, this is a ladder, and the ladder I want to use as an illustration of your dreams and how we take steps towards our dream. Some of you today just need to take a step. You need to just step out a little bit. God wants you today, hear me, to get unstuck. God wants you to leave today and start stepping into your purpose, your divine destiny that God has just for you. What he has for you is not what he has for me. What he has for you may not be for the person next to you. God has a unique assignment for every one of us in the room, and today God wants to help you step into that today. When it comes to life, like I said, we have, we have the couch that can represent that comfortable life, and we have the ladder that, that exists as, as taking steps towards God's dreams for our life. When I think about comfortable life and just looking in the Bible at some of the different stories, the disciples, let's take them for, exa for, for example, they're, they're living a pretty comfortable life, especially a few of them, as you know, were fishermen. I mean, think about it. Get up, have some fish tacos, head off to their job where they fish, sell their fish, go home and have an assorted fish dinner, go to bed, wake up, fish tacos again, you know it, comfortable, paying the bills, they got a business, things are going fine just every day. Some of you are like, I would, I would love to fish every day, but listen, that's all they did every day. Jesus comes along, and he starts selling this vision to them, and they leave everything about comfortable and start taking steps towards this unbelievable dream that God put in their hearts. Think about it. Not only did they risk their jobs and risk, they were risking their lives. They knew they would rather live a life that risked their very life than stay in a comfortable life in a routine, in a rut that lacked power, that lacked purpose. They got off their big, comfortable couch. Listen, God doesn't call us to be comfortable. He calls us to be committed. He calls us to be committed when we're scared, when we're alone, when we don't have the money we need, when we don't have the resources or the people. God just wants you to be committed, and he'll step in and do the rest. So what is it today God wants to get you out of your comfort zone to do? What is it today? Some of you are already thinking, okay, man, get off my case. Yes, my life represents the big comfy couch. Shut up about it. Well, just give me a few more minutes, and then I will. But listen, what is it today? God is speaking to you all across the room. What is he saying to you today? I know people that have said for years, one of these days I'm going to, and you fill in the blank. One of these days, man, I've got a dream. I'm going to do this or that. I've known people that have talked about things their whole life. Think about it. We're here today because Pastor Jonathan said, I have a dream God has put in my heart to go start a church in San Antonio, Texas. And instead of saying, one of these days, man, he made it happen, and here we are today. Listen, what is it today? And it can look different than everybody else. It can look different. The other day, I was on Facebook, and I, I honestly didn't even know I was going to be speaking this today, but I was just thinking about people and their dreams. One of my passions is, is for people to step into their dreams that God puts in their heart. And um, I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to ask a question. So I got on Facebook, and I said, if today you could step into your dream, what would that look like? Money's not an issue, time, resources, just snap your fingers, and boom, I'm living it. And I want to share with you some of the responses I got, okay? Someone said, I want to open a French home decor store. Yeah. Somebody said, I want to be a whitewater guy. Somebody said, I want to open my own tax agency. Someone said, event planner. Someone else said, have the best food truck known to mankind. And I said, then live next door to me. And someone said, writing a book, a freedom ministry. Someone else said, write a book to inspire women. Someone said, write a book for children. Someone said, open a, prevent, a suicide prevention facility, living on a ranch, riding horses, taking photos for ministry. So I, I read all these, and I was amazed because I got 35 or 40 responses. And literally every response that someone was being serious with, all I could think about was take a step. 
Go for it. Stop saying, one of these days I'm going to write a book. One of these days I'm going to open this ministry. One of these days I'm going to have a food truck. Look, take a step today. Stop thinking about it. Stop dwelling on it. Stop just dreaming. Get out of the comfortable couch and start stepping in to the destiny God has for you. Here's what I also understand. A lot of people think when it comes to stepping into a dream that God has put in our heart or, or whatever it is he has for you, that it has to look like you being on TV and preaching to people. That's not the case. God may literally be calling you to, to, to open up a food truck. God may literally be calling you to start a children's ministry book. But you have to take a step. You have to go for it. Let me crush your dreams real quick. What, if it's a God dream, it's impossible. Let me just crush your dreams. That's all. See you guys later. No. If you have a God dream, I can tell you how to know if it's a God dream. If it really is impossible. You don't have the money, time, resources, people, whatever. That's a God dream because God wants to fill in the impossible with his abilities. He wants to show off. He's calling you, though, to take a step. So what's a step for you today? A step for you, I need to work on my marriage. Go back and watch the last four weeks of define the relationship and work on your marriage. My marriage is good after that series. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> see my eyebrows? You know what I'm saying? Hey, babe, I can see you on the front row. Listen, do whatever it takes. My first step, hey, I need to start saving some money. Start saving some money. My first step is I need to go find somebody that's already where I want to be, and I need to start learning from them. Take a step. Maybe it's, you know what, I need to work on some foundational things. I need to just give my life completely to Jesus. I need to get in a small group and get around some good people. I need to start serving on a rock star team right here at North Rock and really finding out what my purpose even feels like. What is that next step for you? The, le the reason I love the latter illustration is this. As you take steps, you become more visible. Okay, I've saved some money. I'm good, I'm good, okay? My next step is I'm meeting with some people that are going to help me, that are already where I want to be, and I'm going to learn from them. I'm taking a step. Okay, I'm good there. Marriage is good, so that's, that's good. All right, I've got now I've got a business plan. I've got a game plan, and I'm taking steps. The more steps you take, the more visible you become. The more visible you become, the more people see what God is doing in your life. The more people that see what God is doing in your life, the more their faith grows. The more their faith grows, the more steps they start taking towards their dream. Do you see what happens? What you thought was just some little selfish dream you had just for you. No, it's God wanting to step in with the impossible and show off through the dreams he has for your life. Isn't that cool? I'm going to clap for myself. Good job, Brad. <laughs> Woo! Man, I'm on fire. I love you guys. Let me just tell you, the earlier service, they got here with an hour less sleep, and they just wanted me to let you know they love Jesus more than you. That's what they said. I was like, I wouldn't say that if I was you. Listen, the Bible has an incredible story of a man who was living a very comfortable life, just kind of existing, and, and it's the book of Nehemiah, and it's chronologically believed to be the last book written in the Old Testament. And Nehemiah writes this book. He's a Jewish man who is serving as the cupbearer for the Persian king. So he's got it pretty good, y'all. He's hanging out on the couch drinking wine with the king every day. It sounds pretty nice, some of you are thinking. He's living in the kingdom. He's got the trust of the king. He's got the ear of the king. He doesn't have to worry about food. He don't have to worry about nothing. He's got it made. Just relaxing, living the life. But something happens that kind of changes everything for him, and we're going to read about it here in Nehemiah. Chapter 1, verse 2 says this, Han and I, one of my brothers, came from Judah with several other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem, the, the holy city. They said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province and are great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept for some days. I mourned, I prayed, I fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. So Nehemiah, just living the good life, finds out that his family, his friends, his ancestors in Jerusalem, the holy city, the walls are down, 
There's no one there to protect them. They could be raided at any moment, and suddenly a dream. Have you ever had that moment where God just puts a dream in you? Just like that, you see something, you feel something, you hear something, you see someone else doing something, and you're like, boom, I want to do that. So that happens in him. He suddenly knows, you know what, I want to rise up, I want to go bring some leadership, some structure, I want to go help them build their walls, and I want to be a game changer, I want to step into the dream God has for me. So today I'm going to give you four points from the book of Nehemiah that are going to help you get off the big comfy couch when it comes to life, all right, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, just nod your head if you're ready. All right, I know you're there, you're ready. All right, number one is this, to get off the big comfy couch, you need a reason or a cause. Listen, if you're stuck in a rut of life and you just no power, no purpose, let's get some purpose. What is it? What is it in your heart that could cause you to get off the comfy couch of life? What is it that God has put in you that he maybe didn't put in anyone else? What is it for you? It doesn't have to be, like I said, on TBN. It can look completely different. I give you permission today to dream differently than everyone else around you. I give you that permission. God gives you the permission today to dream for your dream to look different than anyone else. So what is your reason? What is your cause? What is the dream that you have? Because the first thing we have to have is a dream. Nehemiah was deeply saddened by the state of Jerusalem so much that he couldn't stay there anymore. He couldn't stay comfortable anymore. He was tired of living life like that. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1, in the month of Nisan, the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before, so the king asked me, why does your face look sad when you're not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of the heart. I was very much afraid. He was very afraid, notice that. But I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Let me tell you why he was afraid. He was afraid because at that time, historically, if you were to step into the presence of the king and be sad or down, if you, if you upset the king in any way, there was a good chance you could be murdered, put in jail, kicked out. So he knew that he was taking a risk. I mean, it even says the king had never seen him sad before. So he took a risk. He stepped in and he wanted to show the heart he had for the cause, the dream that God had put in him. So the second thing we learned to get off the big comfy couch is you've got to have faith over fear. Faith over fear. Sometimes really fear is not fear. Fear is really just an excuse. Sometimes it's that first step that just keeps us on the couch because it's really a great little excuse for us to stay comfortable. Life is really, get, it really gets boring when you're comfortable. I remember when I was a teenager, I, would, I didn't have to do much in the summer. You know those days when, you, when you're a teenager, you slept in every day, you don't know what day it was. Mom would be like, it's time to go to church. You're like, oh, it's Sunday? I don't even, I don't even know what day it is. And like it's really fun for a few weeks, and I hated school, but come about end of July, someone would be like, hey, are you ready to go back to school? You know, normally I'd be like, no, I'd be like, yeah, I kind of am. I'm tired of just being comfortable. I'm tired of just existing. I'm ready to get back into life. Look, some of you need to get back on the dreams that God has for you. Take faith over fear. He knew he could be put to death, but it was not worth it for him to stay comfortable. Some of you, man, you know you've been living life like that, but it's not worth it anymore. It's not worth it. Have some faith. Have some big faith that can overstep the fear that you have. Don't let excuses get in the way. Take action. Take action. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, the king said, what is it that you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, If it pleases the king and your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city of Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Jumping to verse 8, And because of the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my request. Nehemiah did not stick around and think through things and come up with excuses. No. So the third thing we learned from Nehemiah is you need to act and you need to take steps now. Now, now, no more in two years or in 10 years or one of these days. Just decide to take that out of your vocabulary. No longer one of these days. 
If you're wanting to write a book, no longer one of these days, go home today and start making an outline. If you're wanting to start a business, go home today and start planning a way to save money. What is the dream in your heart? Act now. Don't leave here today and allow yourself to get comfortable again. Let me just say this. On Sundays, we could, near, we could, we could actually call this series Big Blue Chair. Big Blue Chair because you're sitting in it. Let me, can I just come sit with you guys for a minute? I'll just come sit with you guys. Can I sit right here? Is this chair taken? It is taken? It, it, was. it was. It's not now. Well, they, they didn't like my message apparently. <laughs> they got out of here. Sometimes we could come just call this series Big Blue Chair. We could hear Pastor Jonathan speak from his heart week after week, and oh man, that's good. That's good. Let me take some notes on that. But when we leave, how easy is it to just be comfortable again? How easy is it to take something that we hear that, that God has put on Pastor Jonathan's heart, and we go home, and we just kind of go back to life. It's so easy to go from the big blue chair back to the big comfy couch of life and just keep doing what we've been doing our whole life. Listen, God today is speaking to you. I hope you're listening because he wants you to start stepping in now to your dream. He just wants you today to take a step. Just take a step. He's saying, just take a step and see what happens. Just take a step and see where I'll take you. Just take a step and see how big of a God I am. I, I, I love the book of James. Jesus' brother writes in, in chapter 2, he says this, If you have faith, but you don't do anything with it, it's all dead. Hear me. He's saying this, if you have faith for God to do something in your life when you go take a step, but you don't even take a step, then what's the point in having faith? Mustard seed faith. You don't have to have a lot of faith. A couple of chapters later, he says this, when we draw near to God, he draws near to us. So here's what I'm saying again. When you go do what you have the possibility of doing, I can save some money. I can work on my marriage. I can start learning from others. I can join a small group. I can do that. We do that, God starts coming down with the impossible. Like I said earlier, listen, if it's a God dream, it is impossible without God. Take a step. Step into your destiny. Go after it. The last reading I'm going to have is Nehemiah chapter 6. We've jumped ahead. Nehemiah took action. God started showing up in a big way. I mean, this is just a little cupbearer wanting to go rebuild the walls of the holy city. But he takes the steps that he's capable of taking, and God starts showing up with the impossible. The king starts writing letters so that others will give him the resources needed, the manpower needed. God starts showing up, and we read here in chapter 6, verse 2. Now it happened when Samballot, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of my enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it. Samballot, the Geshem, sent to me saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent a message to them, and check this out. And I said, I'm doing a great work. I can't come near it. Why should the work cease when I leave to go down to you? But they sent me this message four times, and I responded the same way every time time. Listen, I hope, I hope you're hearing me. I hope you have what it takes to get out of the comfortable couch and start stepping into your dreams. I hope you know what your dreams are. I hope you have faith over fear, and I hope that you'll move today. But if you do, the last thing I want to share with you is this. Not everyone can go with you. It's not going to look the same for everyone. Not everyone's going to be able to celebrate with you. You're going to start taking steps towards it, and some people are going to question it. Some people are going to get annoyed by it. Some people are just going to be uh, just mean about it. There's a saying that misery loves company. Some people just want you to stay comfortable, man. They just want you to stay in the, in the rut of life. They don't want you to have power and purpose. But when you start taking steps, listen to me, people are going to show up because you're going to become more visible. God's going to start using you. And when God starts using you, the enemy's going to show up. 
I'm convinced that the enemy knows how to cut his losses. The devil, I think, knows how to cut his losses. He's okay that you go to church every week and you and your family, you're going to go to heaven, okay? I think he knows. I can't get everyone, but if I, fine. But when you get off the couch and you start affecting other people, that's when the enemy starts showing up. He's not cool with you getting out of complacency and making a difference in the lives of others. So he will show up, but what's amazing is God will show up even bigger. He'll show up even bigger. So you start working. You start taking steps. And the fourth thing is this. You have to ignore the haters. You've got to ignore them. People want to hate on you. What did Nehemiah do? He went and he rebuilt the walls in 52 days. He's sitting on his dream and suddenly someone shows up, his enemy. And they say, hey man, come, come back down here. Come back down to us. Nope. I'm doing a great work. I don't need to come down. I'm doing God's work, and this feels way better than the couch. I'm not coming down for you. It may be people. It may be things. It may be your past. I'm doing a great work. I'm not going back to that old relationship that tripped me up. I'm doing a great work. I'm not going back to that old lifestyle for that temptation, for that addiction. And you may have to say it over and over, just as Nehemiah did four times. You may have to say, I'm doing a great work. I'm not coming down. I'm finally in line with the will of God. I'm finally chasing my dreams, and God is using me. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I want to tell you a quick story as I close. Jess and I have some friends back home. Their names are Adam and Kelly. And um, they have been trying to have kids for a long time. And Jess and I, we had, we had some difficulty with that. We had a miscarriage. It was one of the hardest things we ever dealt with. And uh, Adam and Kelly, they've been trying. They've paid money. They've had procedures done. They've consulted with all kinds of doctors all over the place. And they have tried, and they have tried, and they've taken step, and they have taken step. And it just wasn't happening. Questioning God. Have you ever questioned God? Come on, somebody, you, you've questioned God before. Like, God, where are you? I, I'm doing the possible. Where's the impossible? And so they tried and they tried and nothing, nothing. Finally, finally they did get pregnant. And we were excited. We were celebrating with them. And then they lost the baby. And you talk about wanting to come off the ladder. You talk about wanting to just go back to routine. And Adam and Kelly, they're, they're fitness freaks. He runs in triathlons, and she runs a couple thousand miles a day. Um, it's crazy. And they just kind of went back to the routine of life, saying, you know what, we're just going to, we're not, we're not even going to worry about it anymore. You know, at this point, we wanted a couple of kids, and we don't even have a kid. It's not working. So they just kind of went back to the routine of life. Let's just get back to doing what we do. But then something started to grow in them. Jess and I went home for the holidays. We spent some time with them. We cried with them. We prayed with them. And let me tell you, man, when God shows up, he's not always just showing up for you. He's also showing up to show the world how big he is. So they decided to look into adoption. That was suddenly the cause. It got them off the couch. They started filling out the paperwork. They found out, hey, this could take several years. Man, another holiday we have to go through without a baby. This is difficult. But you know what? We're going to only do what we can do. We're going to take another step. We're not, we're not going to just quit. We're going to do everything in our power. So they did. They filled out the paperwork. They're not even done with everything, y'all. A couple weeks ago, I get a text message. I'm here in the building. And it's my friend Adam on a Thursday night. And he says, bro, we just got a call. There's a lady scheduled to, to induce next Friday. And we could potentially be the parents. So we're thinking and praying about it. We're not even done with everything. I'm like, bro, that's amazing. He said, but here's the kicker. It's twins. So I'm like, man, some people get nine months. You're getting nine days to decide, man. You better get to work, buddy. Text me back a little while later, and he's like, in caps, 
pray for us. We have to decide. She just went to the hospital with labor pains. Oh, my goodness. Bro, some people get nine months, you get nine hours. So they are thinking and, and they're trying to decide, you know, twins, you know, it's like this major exciting moment for them because the impossible is happening. They told them it could be years. Now they've got an option for two little twin baby boys. Four, 4 35, 30 in the morning, I get this picture. Yeah. I have another photo of, they've got a professional photo now. Look at that. Listen to me. I get emotional on this stuff because of this. What I'm doing right now is sharing a story that's increasing your faith because some people started taking steps towards their dream. Yeah, God's blessed them in a big way, but today it's on social media. I'm speaking it to you. People are watching online. start doing the possible, God will meet you with the impossible, and the higher you climb, the more visible you become, and the more God does in you, the more people are going to see it, and the more their faith increases, just like it is right now. Stop saying one of these days, get off of the couch, start achieving your dreams, faith over fear, and act now. Let me pray for you. Father, we love you so much. God, I just feel your presence in this room in an amazing way. I know, God, that you want to do something so big in so many lives here today. Lord, I pray that some people would have some faith to step out, to get out of the rut and start stepping into a life that has purpose and power. And God, even though we don't see every step of the way, we don't see what you want to do in the end, God, we know that you are faithful and that you have prepared something and you have a unique assignment for every one of us, God. And today you want us to act. Today you want us to go home and make preparations. No more sitting in a big blue chair, just hearing a good message, but today we're going to act. Today we're going to get unstuck and step in to your will for our life. As we continue to pray with no one looking around, maybe your first step today is just to completely and wholly give your life to Jesus. It's a foundation thing. Today, Jesus, I, I want to give my life to you. I want to give my job, my time, my finances. I want to give everything to you. If that's you, nobody looking around, could I just see your hand so I can pray for you? I'm not going to have you come down or anything. I just want to know who I'm praying for. You lift your hand. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Man, I see hands all over. Anybody else want to join these? Stepping into your destiny today. Awesome. Awesome. You can put those hands down. Let me just pray a prayer for you as you pray along with me. Lord, today we give our hearts to you. We give our lives to you. Completely committed to you. Making you the center of our life. Confessing with our mouth and believing in our heart that you are our Savior, that you died on a cross for our sins so that we could be free from this rut of life, living in sin. We're doing a great work. We're not coming back down to the old life today, completely brand new, giving ourselves to you, knowing, God, that you're going to meet our possible with the impossible. And God, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. How about a big hand in this place for those? Awesome. Awesome.